Hey, Chris Young here from HomeKit Geek, a channel where we bring you new smart home content every week. If it sounds like it might interest you, please consider subscribing below. This is kind of a special video in that I'm trying to get this out as quickly as possible to help those of you make a choice as to whether or not this is something you might like to try, which is the Logitech Circle 2 wired cam, which was HomeKit compatible, released some beta software uh, that allows you to play around with the new HomeKit secure video feature. Bottom line, unless you really, really wanna to kind of get your, your feet wet and jump into the deep end of the pond with this, I would hold off for now for a few reasons. Stability, um, I've already seen some problems. The audio quality isn't great, and although I absolutely believe they're going to get there. This is one of those bleeding edge things that you might want to wait until they get some of the kinks worked out and let people like me um, really play around with this. So, so if you guys have any comments or questions, please, I would love to hear from you below. Um, definitely check out in the video details. There is a link for my Amazon affiliates. If you are suddenly inspired to buy a Logitech Circle camera or honestly just about anything, I would really appreciate that. You pay the same price. I get a couple uh, couple of cents in into my pocket, which helps to just con me to continue doing this. So with nothing more, let's get into it. So today a big thing happened, which is the first uh, mostly official release of a device which is going to support the new HomeKit Secure Video. So for those of you who don't know, Secure Video really lets us take our privacy back into our own hands and allows us to record our videos from our cameras directly into iCloud. Nobody else can get control of it. Nobody else can see it. Uh, they can't share it with the police. All of that good stuff, right? So this is actually a big deal and it's something we've really been waiting on. Um, as of the announcements back in the summer, we actually saw that uh, three major manufacturers, Eufy, Netatmo, and Logitech, did announce their intentions to support the uh, secure video, but Logitech is the first one to fire that shot. So today, what happened? The Logitech Circle 2 with HomeKit Secure Video was released, and basically what that means is that you can get a new beta update, which we will point out and talk to you about a little bit, um, which will allow you to take your Circle 2 camera and now use it uh, directly with the secure video features of iOS 13.2. So what do you need for this? You need the iOS 13.2 or later, obviously. Uh, you need the Home Hub, uh, whatever that is, whether that is a um, iPad, home, HomePod, or Apple TV. Again, that should be running 13.2 as well. You need a HomeKit secure video camera, which of course the Logitech is the only one right now. And uh, then you're also gonna need a supported iCloud storage plan. So what exactly does that mean? What that means is that you want to have the basic plan if you all you want to do is have streaming video and storing of video clips. That's it. That's all you're going to get. If you want to actually record video when you're not there, uh, you need a 200 gig iCloud storage plan to support one camera. And if you have up to five cameras, your next step up and there is a two terabyte plan. So let's take a look at setting this up. So I do have to give it to Logitech here. They made it actually a fairly painless process. When you update to the new Logitech app, uh, you're gonna get the update, what's actually there. It's gonna tell you HomeKit Secure Video is the new thing and how to set that up. What I will do as well is I will include links to the Logitech support page, which details this because there is a couple things that they already know can go wrong. One of them is of course um, that HomeKit can't connect afterwards, which it gives you some tips on that. So definitely check in the video detail links if you're having any issues with this. Um, first things, and, and I will say this early in the video, again, I'm gonna repeat it. This is beta software, beta. Be careful, be cautious. Uh, if you're not comfortable with running betas, don't do it. Um, they have given a really, really good understand and agree message here, which tells me that there are probably a lot of bugs and a lot of things that we're gonna discover. Um, I understand and agree to the following. The camera will not be usable with the Circle app. So you can't use it anymore with the Logitech Circle app. The, no video history or settings will be transferred over. I am responsible for canceling any Circle Safe subscription. So if you did have a Circle Safe subscription, you could continue to pay for that. That's possible. And I understand that if you want to return back, you're going to actually have to contact support. There's not an easy way to do that. So a little bit of video magic. Um, I sped up that whole process. Your camera has been now converted to HomeKit. Remove the camera from the Circle app. Yeah, I'm fine with doing that because I don't really use the Circle app much anyways. 
And once we're done that, we're gonna move over to the Apple HomeKit app and take a look. So anybody who's used HomeKit should be familiar with this. We're just gonna scroll down to the bottom of our favorites. I've got my camera set up as a favorite. One thing to be aware of is I was getting some no responses. So the firmware is, I'm not sure if I just tried to connect too quickly or not, but again, this was beta software. I get this camera is being view viewed by someone else. Um, you know, be aware of that. Beta software, you need to know what you're going into. What is interesting as well, though, is because this camera is being completely controlled by HomeKit now, I actually get the camera status light and the night vision light available right within the Logi camera um, settings here. You Typically, I had to go back before and do that in the Circle app, but now they're here. So for me specifically, I need to turn off that night vision uh, because I have this mounted on a window. So the other thing is I have the ability to decide when I'm gonna stream and recording. Um, when I'm home, I'm only gonna allow people to stream. I don't need to record anything. I don't care, I'm actually here. But when I'm away, maybe I want to stream and record there. So what's nice is Apple actually gives us a pretty thorough description of exactly what's going on. Do we just wanna detect activity and do notifications? Do I wanna allow people to stream and see what's going on? Um, or do I wanna allow full recording as well, right, which is, I, I like that. I like that I have that ability. Um, as well within the recording options, you have some um, some recognition, some machine learning being applied here. So you can say, do I want to record when any motion is detected or only with specific? Maybe I want to ignore my animals or vehicles. Maybe I only want vehicles and people. Again, you have some options here. So we're going to move over to the iPad and take a look at the last thing I wanted to show you guys, which is the recordings and kind of how you can play with those, how you can manipulate those. So once you've, the camera's had a chance to, to gather some recordings, again, this isn't gonna be right away you're gonna be able to do this. Uh, you can go in and you kind of have this scrubber along the bottom. And once you access that, you can kind of scroll back in time and see exactly what was going on. Right, so of course in recording options, we're gonna make sure that this is there. So I've got any motion is, is detected, right? I'm probably gonna back this off uh, later on because I don't wanna be consuming too much space. And of course I have the ability to erase all of my recordings, all of them absolutely, which is nice, right? That's that's something not always available in, in some of the other third-party cameras where you're streaming up to the cloud. Right, so um, like I said, we have the scrubber here at the bottom, and if we start moving the scrubber back and forth, we can see that as we move back in time, um, I have the ability on a specific date to move back in time. And at the top of the screen, I'm also going to see that I have the ability to choose the day or scroll through weeks, all that kind of stuff. So once I find a moment where there's something interesting happening, right, I can just tap on the little send to button there on the bottom left. And so this is going to take a little bit of time to figure itself out, which you can see in the top right-hand corner, there's that spinning sun. But once we actually uh, get that, it's gonna kind of download the video, does whatever it has to do for processing, and I'm going to get the typical um, Apple sent to. So I can do iMessage, I can save to my videos, uh, I can save to Dropbox, all of those kinds of things once this is over, which we will see in just a second. So for those of you who skipped right to the end of the video to get the recommendation, I would highly recommend you hold off on doing this uh, until those of us who are on the bleeding edge and enjoy being here have a chance to play around with it and Logitech get some things worked out. There are some outstanding questions. How are firmware updates gonna happen when the Logitech app no longer knows about the camera? What's gonna happen there? Um, how do I get back and load this into HomeKit if the camera has to be factory reset, if my HomeKit home disappears? There's all these questions that are really kind of still unanswered. So um, unless you really wanna be involved in finding those answers, I would really, really recommend that you just stick with the, the, uh, the traditional, the old integration, uh, stick with the Logitech camera the way it is, and let the bugs shake out before you dive in. If you guys have any comments or questions, please definitely put them below. I would be happy to get back to those back to you as, as quick as I can. Uh, if you love this, if you hate it, uh, feedback is always appreciated, and we'll see you guys soon.